Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitali, and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I'm going to show you how to make a delicious focaccia that we are going to sort of stuff with roasted garlic and mozzarella and spicy salami, and it is divine. I shared it with you on Instagram. You all went crazy for it and wanted a full recipe. So here we are. We've made focaccia before together. We will be making it again and again, and I'm certain of it. I don't think you can get enough good focaccia recipes. This is so good. Perfect to put out with like your charcuterie board. If you're doing a big one for the holiday season, New Year's, or any time you want to have delicious bread. <laughs> um, so let's get started. In a large bowl, of a standing mixer, you're gonna need your flour. To it, you're gonna add a mixture of, this is instant yeast, and some sugar, not salt, sugar. This is a tip, this is a tip that I actually learned from my nonna when she came here this year. She said, when you're making dough, put it, you know, in the mixer, add your sugar and your yeast, and add your, or add your liquids, and then you're gonna go ahead and add your salt once the dough gets incorporated. She swears that it rises better this way. Um, same to me. But <laughs> if Nana says it to do it this way, that's just how we're gonna use it, do it. Add your warm water along with a really good amount of good extra virgin olive oil. Because remember, focaccia is densely with you know flavored with extra virgin olive oil so don't skimp you're gonna let this knead until it comes together um, it's somewhat of a sticky dough consistency I'll show you what it looks like when it's there I actually forgot to show you when we add the salt so Nana says that when the dough starts to come together like this you're gonna take your salt and you're going to sprinkle it in as it kneads and folds onto itself and apparently it gets salted perfectly and it doesn't blend with the yeast. It doesn't kill your yeast. Um, and I can't say that it hasn't made a gorgeous dough. So whether it works or not, I don't know. Nona says to do it this way, so this is how we're doing it. The dough is gonna be so perfect when it's done. It just needs to knead for a little while longer. This dough is perfect. This is what I mean when I said not all me and machinery don't always see at eye this is what i mean when i said it'll be slightly sticky see that just slightly it's more tacky than anything if you find that to be annoying to get it out of the bowl you can just take a little bit of flour rub your hands and look and you'll be able to pull it right out and doesn't all stick to you and then i have an oiled bowl ready to go um you just pull it together like that. Like I said, it's meant to be a little bit tacky and sticky, so do not panic. Flip it over in your bowl. You wanna make sure all sides are coated in the oil. And I'm gonna go ahead and cover this with plastic wrap. I want this to be nice and doubled in volume. I want it to be really risen, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. But I gotta wash up. All right, my dough was perfectly risen. I deflated it before we turned the camera on, so my apologies, but it's all good. You have seen risen dough many times. Now, you wanna prep your pan. I'm using a nine by 13. I find it to be the perfect pan. You're gonna drizzle it with good olive oil. Make sure you get the sides. Remember, focaccia loves oil. Focaccia is gonna drink it up and give you that really perfect consistency that you're used to. I use one of these little uh, bench scrapers and then all you're gonna do at this point is just spread it out that's all you're gonna do just like that perfect it just it's like supple and it's wonderful now I'm gonna go ahead and put plastic wrap back on it. I'm gonna use the same piece and this has to rise again another hour or so or until it's doubled in volume making bread making focaccia is a uh, Labor intensive in the way that you just need to have the time for it to rise. It's not difficult, but it does need some time to rest um, and rise and do its beautiful magical thing. So I'm gonna just pop it back in and let it rise. It won't take nearly as much as it did on the first rise. The first rise can take up to about three hours. This will take about an hour, and then we will move on to the next step. Four. All right, that's risen beautifully. Let me show you what I have here. 
I've got some roasted garlic and what I did was, look how soft this is. I don't know if you can come really close and see. I took cloves of garlic, look at this. Look how soft and yummy and roasted and gorgeous it is. Peeled it, put it in a little dish, covered it with olive oil and I went ahead and roasted the garlic into an oven at like 350 for like an hour until it became this gorgeous, incredible, nutty color. It's fantastic. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of pinching it in my hand and then just kind of dotting it all over the place. And these are gonna act like little dimples you do on focaccia and it releases that flavor so beautifully all up in there. It's really phenomenal. I can't even begin to tell you. You can use this focaccia um, to make like sandwiches for a holiday party, regular dinner, a Tuesday night because you've earned it and you deserve it, um, anything your heart desires. Then I take marinated mozzarella balls, little bocconcini, little chiliagine, little ones like this, and I do the same thing. I just nestle, okay? Because I want this to be so rich and delicious. It's the holiday season, but really around here, listen, you're gonna, do, you're gonna know a few things when it comes to my house, okay? You're gonna know that you're always gonna eat good there's always a fresh pot of coffee on, and I'm gonna give you so many sugies. That means loving, you know, because that's what you deserve. So if you wanna make this special for an everyday occasion, you do that, because that's what we do in, in our house, and I want you to do the same thing. Spicy salami, spicy provolone, spicy provolone, spicy pepperoni, whatever you wanna get, get. I love these little round, spicy, delicious little nuggets of salty goodness. And I just do one of these. I like to lay them like that. Oven is already preheated to 425. This is gonna go right in. I'm just gonna wash my hands really quickly because I wanna grab some salt and I don't like to put oily hands in my salt pig or in the PVC pike as Papa Sal would say it. Let me wash up and then we'll continue. I'm gonna drizzle a bit more of this garlic infused olive oil on top because remember, focaccia needs it, focaccia loves it, focaccia deserves it. And by the way, this, you better, you better save that, put it in the fridge. It will solidify because you use olive oil and then you just take a scoop of it and put it in a, a skillet and then you can use on everything. A pinch of salt. Now, I like to do either some hot pepper flakes or I also like to add a little Calabrian chili oil. It is a specialty item that's really hard to find. I have mine from an Italian shop. I'm not gonna ask you to go find it, so I'm just gonna use hot pepper flakes today because we all have some hot pepper flakes in our pantry, or none at all. Don't use any at all. And a little fresh rosemary because I just feel like rosemary focaccia are like best friends. Um, she's beautiful. She's a moment. She's fantastic because she's ready to go in a really hot oven, like I said, 425. Um, 20, 25 minutes, you'll see uh, how perfect it's going to look. Once it's done, pop it in, I'll show you what it looks like when it's ready, and then. Look at how gorgeous. Watch what's happening here, look in here. That matz has kind of melted into these gorgeous, just puddles of deliciousness. And you just gotta see this, because honestly, it just wouldn't, doesn't really do it justice. Look at that. Look at those puddles of that matz, okay? This is, look at the fluff. It's soft, it's gorgeous, it's delicious. It's got beautiful texture on top. It's ooey gooey, hot. Listen, mmm. It is next level. You've got your delicious smooshed garlic in here, your mats, your crispiness, your saltiness, your heat. I love bread so much. This is a phenomenal, mm. It's a phenomenal way to start a party. If you are Italian, you've been to Italy many times, it doesn't surprise you to have lovely bites of delicious bread with your aperitivo. Go to lauraintheKitchen.com for the written recipe. It's a must have. Hope you enjoy spending time with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.